If you've looked into getting solar panels for your home before, there's a good chance you've come across a horror story or two. It's not turned out to be what was promised. They know it's not working and they don't ever respond to anything. Do we do we have to go file bankruptcy? I wish I'd have done a little bit more research, seeing the problems that other folks have had. Getting the wrong solar set up for your home or having an absolute terrible customer experience is definitely not the goal. So what are the top mistakes that homeowners should avoid when they are looking into getting solar for their home? We go over it in today's video. Hey, it's Elijah with Suns.com, America's leading online solar marketplace, and let's jump right into it. Mistake number one, under or overestimating future energy usage. Keyword, future. So for homeowners looking to get solar panels for their home, the beginning process typically involves getting a copy of your bill and giving it to your solar rep so they can see exactly how much energy you've used in the last 12 months. The reason why that's important is because the amount of kilowatt hours that you've used in the last 12 months justifies the amount of panels that your home will need. The previous 12 months of electricity usage is a great baseline, but the thing that really matters is how much energy you're going to use in the future. So it's important to think about what your lifestyle is going to be in the future. You know, are you going to get an electric vehicle? Do you have kids that are going to go to college so they're going to be moving out? Do you plan on getting a new pool or a new hot tub or do you plan on working from home? If you don't take things like that into account, you could end up with the wrong system. If your system is too big, then you're paying for power that your home doesn't necessarily need. If your system is too small, then you're still paying a utility bill where you can't have control over the rates and, and stuff like that. So it's important to think about what factors are gonna come into play when it comes to your energy usage in the future. So mistake number two is not owning the solar system. So 15 years ago, when the residential solar industry really began to grow, uh, banks and lenders wouldn't finance these systems because they cost so much more and the industry was still very young at the time. So that's when third party owned leases were born. So all the third party leases is just when the solar company installs and maintains a system for you and you either lease the system at a flat monthly rate or you agree to purchase the power, also known as a power purchase agreement, at a cheaper rate compared to what the utility is charging you. So you're probably wondering, oh, this sounds pretty fair. I mean, what's the downside? The downside is you don't get the federal tax credit, which is 30% of the total cost of the system. The company that installs the system for you gets the tax credit. So they get the benefit of getting a 30% tax credit. Also, if you're leasing the system, you're not putting any equity into the system. You're just still renting your power like you are with the utility, even though it's at a cheaper rate. So at the end of the 20 to 25 year term, you're not gonna own the system. You still either have to purchase it or the company will come and take it off your roof. And usually with these leases, you're not saving as much compared to a $0 down financing option or um, cash. You're just not gonna be saving as much. So if you don't have a bunch of cash laying around to just buy a solar system cash, there are plenty of $0 down financing options available for homeowners. So you can build the equity into the system. Uh, you know, there's no lien and you're gonna be saving a lot more money. Mistake number three is gonna be not understanding or claiming the federal solar tax credit. So as of August, 2022, the federal solar tax credit was increased to 30%, meaning that homeowners that purchase the system, whether it's cash or $0 down financing, they get 30% of the total cost back as a tax credit. And the good news about that, it just got extended for another 10 years. So here's something really, really important to understand. This is a tax credit, not a tax rebate. So with the tax credit, you only get back what you pay in taxes. So if you don't have any taxable income, you know, you're retired and, and you're living off of Social Security or something like that, you may not be eligible to receive any tax credit. But if you do have taxable income, you can claim that tax credit for the next five years after your system is installed. So another cool thing about the federal solar tax credit is the 30% federal tax credit can be applied to backup batteries or even a new roof, just as long as they're purchased at the same time of the solar system. So it's important to be transparent with your solar rep when it comes to your tax liability, um, because it'll just make it easier for them to explain how solar would work specifically for you and your situation. All right, so mistake number four is installing solar panels on an inadequate roof. This means a few different things. It could be the age, old or new. If the roof is over 10 years old, it's recommended that you get a new roof instead because the last thing you wanna do is get solar panels installed on your home and end up having to get them taken off, which can cost a lot of money just to put on a new roof, just to put the uh, solar panels back on. Also, if your roof is brand new, you just got it replaced, 
Don't rush the solar installers to get the panels on because it's recommended to wait at least 30 to 60 days. This will allow the shingles to stick um, so there's no damage to your roof when the installers are up there installing panels. So some other factors that can deem your roof inadequate for solar would be things like shading. If you have a bunch of trees around your property, probably not ideal to install solar panels. And then the orientation. So the best place to put solar panels is in the south or southwest plane of your roof because it gets the most sun exposure. And the more sun you get, you won't need as many panels, so it's not gonna cost you as much money. So mistake number five that homeowners make, and this is probably the most important one, is choosing the wrong installer. So the solar industry is growing rapidly. Um, there's thousands of solar companies coming out, seems like every year out there. So it's important to compare installers and figure out which one is best for you and your home. But the most important question you have to ask yourself when you are determining whether or not a solar installer is the best fit for your home is, do you see this installer being around in the foreseeable future? So when you're purchasing solar panels, inverters, batteries, anything like that for your home, those product warranties get passed over to the installer so that they can service them. If 15 years down the road, you know, you have an inverter glitch or a solar panel drops in production, you want to be sure that the installation company that you worked with is going to be there to service those warranties and fix those issues for you without you having to pay anything out of pocket. But if you work with a bad installer without having your installation company around in the future, if anything goes wrong, you could be stuck paying a solar repair company a bunch of money just to fix your equipment that's warranted. There's no customer service, there's no technical support, and there's no offers for any upgrades. You're gonna be all on your own. And most importantly, don't just choose a quote because it's the cheapest. I've seen time and time again, over the years that I've been in the solar industry, customers choosing these quotes because they just are the cheapest. Um, and two, three years down the road, that company goes out of business. And again, like we talked about, they're stuck dealing with problems. This isn't the case all the time, but if a company comes in and they just want to be the cheapest quote, it's usually because they have inferior gear or it's a solar company that has the idea that they're just going to come into the market and just undercut everybody. But installation companies, they have to buy the equipment, fund the installation process, permitting, inspection, stuff like that. But they also have to provide service for the next 20 years. And a lot of companies that are coming in and they just wanna be the cheapest, they forget about that last bit. So here's some things to check out um, when you are looking at a solar installation company. Look at the company history and the company information. Make sure they're licensed and insured because if they're not, you know, if, if they're installing the system and somebody falls off your roof, you could be liable. You know, check out their online reviews. You, you want to see what other customers are saying about them and if they have any testimonials too, that, that always helps. See what products they're offering and what kind of warranties and or guarantees that they offer with the system as well. And we're gonna get into that. By the way, the first link below this video is gonna take you to our website where you can compare quotes from top rated solar installers 100% online. It's 100% free and you can get started in just a few minutes. So mistake number six is not getting a power production guarantee. So if you're talking to a solar rep or a solar installer, you may hear things like performance guarantee and stuff like that, but a performance guarantee and a production guarantee are two different things. And a performance guarantee, it's basically the installer just saying, hey, we guarantee that it's gonna work, right? But a production guarantee is the solar installer putting their money where their mouth is and saying, hey, before we even install the solar system, we're gonna tell you how much it's gonna produce. And when we do install the solar system, we guarantee that it's gonna produce that much power. And if the system doesn't produce the amount of power that the installer said it would, they then have to refund you the amount that it didn't produce. Mistake number seven, not getting a monitoring system or an alert system installed. This is a big one because solar is kind of a set it and forget it situation. You know, once the panels go up there, there's no moving parts. So there's very, very little maintenance if you need any. But if there's a thing like a drop in production or an inverter goes out or a solar panel is less efficient, you want to be able to log in and see that kind of information or be alerted that something is wrong with your system. So those are the top seven mistakes that I see homeowners make when they are getting solar for the first time for their home. But it is important to figure out how much a solar system should cost for your specific home. So click the next video to learn the three key factors that affect the cost of installing solar panels on your home.